Hi guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the new Micro ATX ASUS Republic of Gamers Maximus 5 Genie. Now this is based around the Intel Z77 chipset and being in the fifth generation of Republic of Gamers we've got some new features to talk about and explore. Now the Genie boards, they've always been the very best of what Micro ATX can offer. Dubbed the mini powerhouse, you get all the features from the bigger ROG boards but at a much smaller price tag so it's perfect if you're going to be building a compact rig. Now some of the features that we've got on this board, I'll just run you through these before we go into the video. We have Supreme FX, this is in its third generation and this brings um, 8 channel audio to you in, uh, in various different standards. We've got EAX 5.0 high definition, we've got Creative Alchemy and we've got THX True Studio Pro. We've also got on this board a section where you can plug in a mini PCI Express adapter. So this gives you mini PCI Express, it gives you mini SATA, and it also gives you USB 2.0. Perfect, you know, if, if you're not wanting to take up necessary space inside your rig, and you just plug this card in, and you can take advantage of those features from the very back of your, of your case, from the rear I.O. So that's a nice little feature, and we'll show you that as we go into the video. We've also got Game First with the Maximus 5 Genie. And this manages the flow of traffic. And you know, so for example, if you're in game and you've got instant messages in the background, perhaps you've got downloads running, you don't want your ping to be affected. And um, the way game first works, it manages the flow of traffic. So it, it can help your, your latency, your ping in game while you've got stuff running in the background. So all of these features we're going to check out in the full review on Vortez.net. I'm also going to show what I can in the video. So I hope you enjoy this video anyway. I'll, uh, I'll take you in an unbox first of all. We'll go inside the box, find out what's inside the accessories, and then we'll show a nice close-up of the new Genie motherboard. Right, let's kick things off then with an unbox. Here we've got the Maximus 5 Genie packaging. You can see, very typical of uh, the Republic of Gamers series. We've got it in a red box, and uh, they've gone a bit further with the packaging as to give you a flip lid with all the fundamental features there and you can get more details on those uh, if you want to read up on that. Flipping the board, the box over, we've got um, technical specifications. Now many motherboard manufacturers don't actually include this on the packaging but we've got the, the, uh, the memory specifications, uh, USB, storage, LAN and it's nice to be able to reference to those uh, if you need to, so that's good. Anyway, opening the box up because we want to check out what's inside, that's what we're here for. First thing that you're going to come into contact with is the motherboard box. So this is black and uh, it has a transparent lid so you can check out the Genie board in all its glory. And we'll check uh, that out in further detail as we go into the video. So into the box we've got, uh, first thing is the user guide. Now you're going to need to consult to this if you uh, have got problems with uh, installing devices, perhaps you've got problems building the rig, uh, but also you know you consult this for um, memory specifications, PCI Express speeds, things like that, and uh, very extensive, helps you locate various things on the board if you're not familiar with it, so that's good. Software CD, we have got a lot of software on here, uh, and uh, I'll go through some of those, uh, what's included. We've got uh, drivers, we've got the Sound Blaster X52 utility, we've got Kaspersky Internet, we've got Demon Tools Pro, CPU Z in the ROG edition, you know you may well have used that yourself on uh, a previous ASUS board. We've also got the AI Suite 2, web storage and the ASUS utilities, so that again is very extensive. We've got the sticker sheet, that's quite handy to have if you want to label up your drives um, just gives you a bit more of a help with that and uh, next we've got the uh, door hanger you might be in a gaming session bang that on your door handle and no one will disturb you or you'll hope that they disturb you anyway and then into this little packet I'll uh, show you what this is now this is what I've, I've been chatting about in the introduction 
mic, uh, micro mini PCI Express combo. So this has got the PCI Express 2.0, it's got USB 2.0 and it's got the mini SATA. So I won't go into the details on this just yet because I want to show you where to plug that in when we go into the video. So that's that little device and uh, as we go into here we've got even more stuff here and uh, there is a lot of items here. We've got the IO shield which is black and uh, most cases today are black on the rear panel so that's really nice to see that. We've got uh, cables for the hard disk drive storage, two of those for SATA 2 so that's 3G and then for the 6G SATA 3 we've got uh, four cables there ROG Connect, we've got the cable there for that, so you can take advantage of that feature. We've got the SLI bridge, which is a flexible ribbon type for, uh, for dual card configuration. And then we've got the Quick Connect, so uh, these help you uh, hook up your, um, your case power buttons, LED buttons. Uh, helps you identify the pins a lot easier, rather than having to get into the user guide. So that's great to see that. So with that unbox open and uh, we've completed that, we're going to check out the board now and see what the Genie is all about. So guys, here's our mini powerhouse, the Genie motherboard, and it sticks with that traditional Republic of Gamers colour scheme that we've seen on many boards in the past. The black PCB, red lanes, ports and slots. The heatsink design is actually quite plain, but then again with Micro ATX there isn't a great deal of space, and for what there is, ASUS have actually made good use of space on this board. So let's investigate further now. We'll run through the lineup of features. At the CPU socket, we have LGA 1155, and this has support here for Intel's third generation CPUs. Now, at the very heart, the core of Maximus 5 Genie is Extreme Engine Digi Plus 2. And across the board, we have 10K black metallic capacitors. Now these will assist with great overclocking potential. And the way that they assist is by simply offering 20% better thermal endurance compared to your standard capacitors. And Azus claim that these capacitors will enable up to 10,000 hours of operation at 105 centigrade. Now you can't ever imagine them getting this hot, but it just proves the durability of these components. And as always with the Republic of Gamers series, this board with the kind of features like this, 10K black capacitors, it's ideal for extreme overclockers and those using liquid nitrogen. So covering the MOSFETs, we have this heatsink design with a single heat pipe. And around here, we have eight plus four plus two power phases, and these are fully digital. Now in simple terms, this just means that the DigiPlus voltage operates natively, which allows for ultra precise adjustments for CPU, integrated GPU and DRAM. And just behind the heat sinks, we have eight pin power for the CPU, giving plenty of juice for those overclocks. Turning our attention to the memory, we have dual channel DDR3 slots, and we've got four of these, giving a maximum of 32 gigabyte, and from 1066 megahertz up to a phenomenal 2666 megahertz. And of course that would be overclocked. And with this, we get support there for Intel's XMP. Now next to these memory slots, we have a go button which is a little red button and it serves for two features. The first feature is very similar to Memo K. Okay? When we press this button just before post it provides a safe boot with the memory into Windows so it guarantees a good boot. And the second feature also serves by loading a preset overclock into the system and that's set in the BIOS. And just beneath this we have the read points which give critical voltages and these are typically used by advanced overclockers. Further on we have a native USB 3 port and next to this we have the SATA storage ports. Now the two black ports are 3G, so that's SATA 2, and then the red ports are SATA 3, 6G. The ones in the middle, the two ports in the middle are provided by Intel's Z77 and the ones on the far left are provided by AS Media. Next to these storage ports, we have LED debug making an appearance. Now, some of you may not know what this is, and this is a great little feature for getting to the root problem of a uh, problematic startup. So what will happen here is on this panel, you'll get an error code. You go to the user manual and you can find that error code. And maybe it's relating to the memory. Maybe it's relating to the CPU. In that manual, it will help to identify the root cause, and uh, then you can go away and rectify the problem.
Now the area that most of you are going to be interested in is the expansion slots and we've got a variety of slots here. The very bottom PCI Express 2.0 X4 and then the two red slots we've got PCI Express 3.0. Support there for Nvidia SLI and AMD Crossfire and we've also got the support for LucidLogix Virtue MVP. Now if you're going to use just a single card then I suggest you use the top slot because this is X16 and uh, the lower slot is X8 so if you're going to use a single card do not use that bottom slot and uh, obviously if you go for a, uh, a dual card configuration SLI Crossfire then it will drop down to X8. Eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed those power and reset buttons at the very bottom. The large red one is a power button and the smaller black one is a reset. Now these are extremely useful if you've got your system outside of a case on a test bench for example like us guys that review stuff. You don't need to have the hassle of connecting those power and reset cables. Before we take a look at the rear I.O. port I just want to show you the mini PCI Express combo card. Now I mentioned this in the introduction and this is a tiny little card which drops onto the motherboard right by the rear I.O. port and this will actually appear on the shield at the back of your computer and this will give you mini PCI Express 2.0, USB 2.0 and mini SATA. So it gives you extra functionality without taking up space inside your chassis. We'll now take a look at what the rear I.O. ports have to offer. So starting at the very left we have a clear CMOS button, ROG connect button, we have three black USB 2 ports and then at the very bottom a white USB 2 port. Now this is for the ROG connect and we've seen the USB cable in the bundled accessories. Next to this we have a red E SATA port and that's 3G two USB 3 ports. Next to this we have optical SPDIF at the very top, HDMI and display port. Of course those are for integrated graphics coming from the CPU. Gigabit LAN, we've got two USB 3 ports and then we've got the six audio jacks which give eight channel audio and this is via our Supreme FX free chip which is located in the very corner of the board and this gives a, a wealth of enhanced gaming audio. So guys that concludes our video today of the new Maximus 5 Genie motherboard and I'm very interested actually to see whether this micro ATX offering can crush the likes of the competition from high-end ATX from the likes of MSI, Gigabyte and others. Certainly from the specifications this is looking very promising. Now unlike other Z77 motherboards which I've reviewed on the channel I wasn't able to give any pricing but with these being now available in the UK and in other places I can give you the pricing. So over in the UK we're looking at £156 for the Genie board. Now I've looked over in the United States at Newegg and I cannot see any pricing over there so uh, where there is no stock just expect it very soon. Now unlike a vast majority of the media, we will not be reviewing this or any other Z77 motherboard using a Sandybridge CPU. You know, it just doesn't make any sense to us. We've got Ivy Bridge support for this board, that's the key benefit. So until then, that's what we'll be doing. We'll be waiting for Ivy Bridge to launch and then we'll have all of the reviews and particularly this Genie board. I'll drop the review in the description when it's available. Thanks very much for watching guys. And if you haven't already, click that subscribe button.